For the best gameplay capture there is, pick up an Elgato today. Links are in the description. Hey guys, how's it going? Masterbucks here, and welcome to another Return to Glory career mode. Last week, we kicked off the series with Nottingham Forest, as voted by you guys, and now we are going to be doing Blackburn Rovers. I want to thank you all so much for the support you put on the first episode and for suggesting a whole bunch of teams for me to do, and I definitely have so many more that I can't wait to do. But just before I let you go and we start the career mode properly, I've got something that I want to talk about really quickly for like a minute or two. It won't take long. If you're not interested in what watching then that's fine. If you just want to go right to the start of the career mode then you can skip to this point in the timeline to just start the career mode. I do want to quickly get out there that this was an idea that I've had in the works and talked about for quite a while now. This whole one episode career mode sort of idea where I just take one team and do a one episode career mode with them. That's something that I've been wanting to do for a while now. But in saying that, that doesn't mean that I didn't know about Jared's series. I should say that I knew of Jared's series. I actually made the decision when I decided to start up my own series that I wouldn't watch any of his because I didn't know or I didn't want to know how he did his. I didn't want to maybe be subconsciously inspired by what he was doing. I wanted everything I was doing to be original and my own. Unfortunately, as it would turn out, what I had in mind ended up being a little bit similar to what Jared was doing. And I did see that after I eventually watched one of his videos after people were saying, that it was a little bit too similar. There were a couple of people that were very, very quick to judge, that's all I'm gonna say, but then again, I probably should have been aware of that. I mean, this is the internet. There is definitely quite a lot of stuff that's splitting my series from Jared's, things that I'm doing different to him and that he's doing different to me, different goals, different sort of criteria that really do split the series quite well. And really the only big thing that they have in common is the fact that it is an entire one episode career mode. I had hoped that whatever I ended up coming out with would have been unique enough that people wouldn't have made any connections to any other series going on. Unfortunately, that didn't turn out to be the case. I ended up going straight to Jared about it. I just let him know immediately. He should his concerns. We had a really good chat and sorted out like proper fucking Aussie men, which I was super happy with. We shared a few ideas about what could be done to sort of, you know, split the two series apart. And I've made a couple of changes based off of that, which hopefully you guys are going to see. And I'm also playing around with another idea. The idea that I came up with is that instead of actually doing this as a proper video, like a 40, 50 minute video, editing and chopping it down after five seasons of recording, I would do it as a live stream. And that is where I need you guys. I want you guys to vote in the poll that should be popping up right here. Would you prefer this be in video format? So just the way it is, or would you maybe be interested in me doing it as a live stream? I'm still looking to do a brand new Return to Glory career mode every single week. That won't change. So every Sunday or Monday or around about this time in the week is when I'll come out with a brand new one, whether it be a video or whether it be a live stream. So yeah, let me know in the poll guys. I'd really appreciate it. And just before we get started, I know I've been going for a while, I apologize, but one last shout out, of course, to the main man, Jared HD. The guy has been an absolute champion about the whole situation. And if for whatever reason you haven't stumbled across his rebuild series that he's doing right now, I'd be very surprised. It's getting recommended by YouTube like crazy and it is absolutely blowing up. So if you haven't seen his series yet, then his link will be in the description down below. You can check him out. He's a guy that's been on YouTube for ages now and to see a smaller YouTuber now finally really blowing up and bursting onto the scene, it really is good to see. And he's an Aussie, so that's just a plus. Jeez, I've been talking for a while. I'm sorry. Now let's finally get into the Blackburn Return to Glory. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy. So then, a brand new return to glory with Blackburn Rovers and let's get it underway. First things first, we've got to take a look at the team. That is the starting 11 that we're going with. Just a straight up simple 4-4-2 formation. And I think with that team, compared to what we have at Nottingham Forest, it's going to be a lot more challenging. Maybe not too much, but definitely a little bit harder. This, by the way, if you didn't know, is another team that's pretty much fighting to stay up in the championship. The same with Nottingham Forest, to be fair. But this team seems just a little bit lower rated. They've got some pretty good players, some nice young players as well, but unfortunately the majority of them seem to be loaned in, like uh, Tom Hoban I think's loaned in, Gallagher and Zhao, they're both loaned in players and they're probably some of the best players that they have. But here's the shortlist though, this is what we're working with for season one, a couple of players that we can get on pre-contracts, a couple of players that we can get now, and a few players that I might loan in as well. I think before we buy anybody though, we'll advance ahead a little bit and wait till we have a bit more info on their stats, but this is the budget that we have, and yeah, it's about the same as what we had last time out as well. Alright, we now have some scout reports back for all the players. So let's see who we're going to pick up. The first player I'm going for is a goalkeeper. He'd probably become our highest rated goalkeeper if we signed him in. And obviously, as I've come to learn in simulations, you really do need to have a pretty decent goalkeeper. So we're getting this man. I'm going to try loaning in a player that I've signed in a previous Road to Glory before with Portsmouth, Tosin Adara Bio. And as I always do, whenever I loan in anybody, I don't really want to do it unless I can buy them later on. So we're going to set a future fee of hopefully 750 grand. We're also going to go for a centre midfielder worth 1.3 mil, but I think I can get it for cheaper because he's in the last year of his contract in Vitale. My chief executive says I can get him between 600 and 900. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to offer the 900. Let's go for it. So we're going to make our 
first signing though, the free agent goalkeeper, 67 rated. He's probably going to go straight into the starting 11. We have got Manchester City getting back to us for Tosin and Darabaya, so we can get him. But Batale still wants to uh, be a little bit more persuaded, aka get more cash. And thankfully, he accepted his new contract. Okay, then. So we have made all the three signings that I wanted to make in this first window. I think I'm probably going to stop doing transfers now. I'm going to start the first half of the season and we'll go all the way to January. Hopefully, have a good start. And just as I say that, we get a training injury. Charlie Mulgrew out for six weeks. Well, there you freaking go. Okay, let's just start the first month of August. All right, last time out with Nottingham Forest, we got promoted immediately. I'm not so sure this time. Let's take a look. A draw against Norwich. We're out of the uh, EFL Cup already. That's not good. And then we beat Wigan in the championship. There you go. We got a draw against Cardiff. Undefeated so far. A win against Burton. And a draw. Okay, so undefeated in the championship. A positive start. Shame to be knocked out of the cup so early. So that start so far has us third, which is a very good start, but we need to try to keep going on. Okay, now for September. Let's see how long this undefeated streak can last for. Another draw against QPR. A goalless draw. A loss against Leeds. That's the first loss in the championship. All right, then. A loss against Rotherham. Oh, that's not good. A loss against Derby, a draw against Sheffield Wednesday. I was worried that we were going to go four straight. Well, we had such an amazing start, and now, oh dear. Oh, jeez. And you know, we've only won two games as well, so it's not like we've had that great a start. We were just undefeated for a while. We've just racked up the draws. Okay, and back into it again. October, we start off again with a loss. This is not really looking good. Another draw against Ipswich. Another loss against my old team, Forest. A draw against Bristol, and a loss against Wolves. We had such a great start. What the fuck went wrong? And now, after such an amazing start in the championship, we are actually in the exact same position that Blackburn Rovers are in currently in the championship, just in the 22nd spot, and we may potentially get relegated if we don't get up. <sighs> All right, then. Here we go. November. Only three games. Of course, we lost. Not good there. A win against Brentford. Yay. A little bit of something to cheer for. And a draw against Newcastle. Okay. Four points out of a possible nine there against uh, two pretty tough opponents. I feel like that's okay. At least for now, it's moved us out of the relegation zone. And finally, now we take a look at the month of December. The big, big match. It's always huge in December. There's already so many games. we got Huddersfield. A draw. Let's see. Preston. Another draw. Brighton. Another draw. This is insane stuff right now. Reading, not a draw. An actual loss, unfortunate. If, you know what? I would have preferred another draw, honestly. But either way, Barnsley, another draw. How about it? This is fucking ridiculous. And Huddersfield, another draw. We played them twice and both got draws both times. Like, for fuck's sake. So we got, what, five points out of a possible, I don't even know what time's at, 6, 18... Oh, this isn't happening. But fuck me, do we just love a draw? Terrific, boys. This is fucking sensational. We are in January and we are potentially getting relegated if we don't actually find a way to potentially win a game every now and again. FIFA 17 does not rate Blackburn Rovers at all. I mean, fair enough. This is where they really are at the moment in the championship, but God damn it. I mean, we did so much better with Nottingham Forest and they're pretty much in the exact same position. I'm going to start with some pre-contract players. Hopefully, we can actually stay in the championship. And if we do and we bring in these players, we'll almost surely be able to push for promotion. A new highly rated goalkeeper in Liali is going to be the first one. This guy used to be a, a absolutely banging pickup back in the day in FIFA career mode. Not so much now. And some other players I might go for. we got Charlie Taylor and DeShiglio, either one of them. Sydney Pessino could be one player that we uh, that we pick up. We got Gazal. I know that he's pretty high rated, but he could hopefully join us as well. And maybe another striker in, uh, who is this, Musa. So don't mind me. I'm going to offer every single one of those players that I mentioned a contract, and hopefully we can see who we can pick up. First player that's agreed to a contract is actually one of the players I really wanted to get here in Sydney Pessino. So this guy is going to be a sensational pickup. 24, nearly 80 rated already. He's going to easily be one of the highest rated players in the championship, and for him to be in Blackburn Rovers would be sensational. And... You know, that just depends on whether or not he actually will be in the championship. Also, just got news that two more players have agreed to contracts here. We've got Konate here, I think. I'm not sure again if that's how you say it, but another quality striker. We want to get him in, that is for sure. And the other one is Charlie Taylor, another player I want to pick up right away. Finally, confirmation after a fair bit of renegotiation that Liali is going to join to another cracking goalkeeper. Finally, we also have Gazal finally accepting his contract. I've had to go pretty much above and beyond to get him, so... I almost starting to think, have I gone too far here? But for a player of his age and of his value and of his overall, I feel like, you know what? Let's just give it to him. Let's go. And because I feel like we have a little bit more cash left and I do want to try to beef up the team as much as I can, I'm either going to go for either Sane or maybe Svensson. And I don't know which one of the two, but whoever I can get the best deal for. Let's give it a go. The first player I think I want to get the most is probably Svensson. He looks like a very good, nice, highly rated striker. And again, we don't actually have a lot of the strikers that Blackburn have, they don't own. They're loaned in. So let's get him. And 
yeah, we should be able to comfortably pick up Sane as well. So then a couple of minor adjustments to the starting 11. We've got a slightly higher rated, decent center back there, Sane. Now we've got Svensson up front, a little bit younger, or only he's quite young. He's, he's only 19, so he can hopefully grow to get higher rated as well. But we didn't really have enough cash to make a real solid 70, mid-70 signing that will really make a big improvement to the team. So hopefully we can just hang on from here. And you know what I'll say? Steel hasn't grown at all, so I'm going to chuck in that free agent keeper that we picked up as well. Okay, so we are done now with another transfer window and another month of football. Let's go. We got a draw against Newcastle, which means we actually took two points against Newcastle in the two games against them. That's all right. We ended up, of course, forcing a replay in the FA Cup against Liverpool. Not bad. A loss against Ipswich in the replay. We ended up getting knocked out again. First round knockouts in both competitions. Beautiful. We can't say that we're focusing on the league because fuck me, we're doing shit in it. We get lost against Birmingham and a loss against Leeds. You cunts want to go down so badly, don't you? Look at this. Look at this fucking shit. We're going to go down to League One. They get. I'm simming every game when we're going down to League One. Okay, please, Blackburn, enough shit. You were the first team to win the Premier League. If you go down to League One, you're an embarrassment. All right, a draw against QPR. A win against Rotherham. That's a bit better. A draw against Sheffield. Okay. I, I mean, the draws are nice, but we really need to start stacking up some wins if we can. Derby, another draw there. And a win against Burton. We went undefeated in the month of uh, February against some okay opponents and picked up two wins. It's the wins that are really fucking important here. And hey, look, I know that we're not, you know, we're still in the relegation zone and it's only on goal difference, but fuck it. We've got uh, a game in hand over Brentford and then you've got like Barnsley only two points away. Ipswich are three point, I mean, four points away. It could happen. Okay, month of March now. Two more left to go after this, and we need some good results here. Not like that. A loss against Wigan, not good. And a win against Cardiff. Okay, good. The three points are good there. That's good. And another loss. Norwich away. All right, then there. Fulham a draw. And a win against Preston. Okay. Uh, are we out of the relegation zone with that off seven points? I, I don't know. Nah, we're still just two points away from safety. Burt and Albion are sitting in the 21st position. We got Huddersfield, who are one of the teams that might even get promoted this season down, way down the completely other end of the spectrum there. Hopefully, we can still, in the next, what, eight games, get enough points to get up. All right, then. And this, ladies and gentlemen, will be the final set of games that we take a look at. There's only one more game in May, and I literally just went ahead and simmed that one. So this is it. This is where we decide whether or not, or find out whether or not we go down. And again, as you can see, not starting off well, a loss against Brighton. What about Reading? A win. Okay, there we go. That's good. That's good. We need as many wins as possible. A loss against Barnsley, not good. A draw against Forest. A draw against Bristol. We need the results to come through quickly. A draw against Wolves. A loss against Villa. This is not looking good. I do not like my chances here. What about Brentford? A win on the final day. That could be big too because Brentford were actually one of the teams that were down the bottom in the relegation scrap. Okay then, let's do this. Let's take a look. Where are we in the table? I swear we're going down. I know that we... Oh, we're 21st! We actually survived! That win against Brentford was what did it. We survived because we beat Brentford. Oh my God. Holy shit, that game decided relegation and thankfully we won it on the final day. We send Brentford down, Burton Albion go down, Barnsley go down. Oh my God, I can't believe it. We are still in the championship. I thought we'd do way better than this. I don't know if we would have gotten promoted. I wasn't expecting it. But then again, oh, fuck me. This team compared to Nottingham Forest, oh my God, spuds. I've inherited a team of literal human weight stains. Thankfully, we've got some great players joining us next season. Okay then, moving on now into another season. Unfortunately, it's another season in the championship, but at least it's not in League One as it was looking like it was going to be. The team now looks a bit like this. Definitely a lot better than it was last season. We have a lot of players that are in the uh, mid to even high 70s. We've got two players, 79, 78, Pacino and Gazelle, not bad there. Uh, Konate right there, the striker position. We've got Charlie, uh, Charlie Taylor at left back. We've got a great goalkeeper now. I think surely this is the year where we get promoted, hopefully. The game could still fuck us over. I mean, I, that is definitely a possibility, but still. We've got a couple more players that I might try to sign, a few players that we can definitely get again on pre-contract, but that's the thing then. We still have a budget that is a championship team. We still only have like $5 million or so. If I sign one decent player that's like 70 rated that can get into the starting 11, that's basically half or maybe even more than half of my budget gone and I won't be able to spend on pre-contract play. It's a really tough, tough position. Here's what I think I'm actually going to do. I think I'm just going to go and simulate the first half of the season and I hope and I trust in the team now that it's higher rated to be able to push for promotion and not be, you know, in the relegation scrap of the bloody championship. That's not what we want. Hopefully, they'll do okay. Okay, so let's go through the first round or month of results. Let's do this. It is a draw to chart. We had so many draws last season. Let's hope it gets better. 
We have got in the, F in the EFL Cup a draw. I assume, obviously, that means we went through on penalties because, clearly, we ended up going through and playing Blackpool. We've got another draw against Middlesbrough. A loss against Leeds. I swear, please, guys, come on, I can't cop this. A win against Norwich, thank you, that's much better. We're still in the EFL Cup after beating Blackpool as well. And a win against Bolton. All right, we got it toward the uh, we got it together toward the end of August. We're currently sitting in sixth position at the moment, although I'm not even going to fucking consider that as a... I don't even care if it was a decent start. We need to keep this going because we had a great start, fucking a better start than this last season, and look where we finished, okay? We need to keep doing that every single month. Okay, now September, let's take a look and see. A win against Cardiff. We've had a few wins in a row now. A loss against Hull City. Yep, all right, now brought back down to earth. And a loss against Reading. Wow. A win against Leeds, still going in the EFL Cup. Beautiful. A loss against Derby, a draw against Ipswich. Okay. Had a little period there, we were doing quite well, and now we seem to be not so, you know, not so hot anymore. Oh, fuck me, and we're right back down to 16th. Again, like, serious, this is almost a repeat of how we started last season, except we're actually going on a bit of a cup run. But fuck me, guys, I can't cop this. We have a much better team, we should be doing better. Moving on again now, we've got October. Let's do this again. We have Sheffield United, a win, a 2-0 win, good start there. Let's keep going. And we do, another win against QPR, Wigan. A draw that time. What about our run in the EFL Cup? Comes to an end in the round of 16. Knocked out by Leicester. And then a loss against Burn. Okay, not a great end to that. But hopefully we maybe have climbed the table a bit there. We have only up to 13th though. And you know the top six is almost starting to get away from us a little bit. Okay, now for the month of November. Let's have it. We've got a win. A good one immediately against Rotherham. A loss against Huddersfield. A loss against Brighton. And a win against Preston. Thankfully it was, so, it was kind of rescued toward the end there. And honestly, I don't mind when we take like at least half the points that are available for each month. But I mean, we are now a point further away from the top six than what we were. So it's not really going to be good enough though, is it? We're sitting pretty much exactly in the middle of the of the table. We still have plenty of football left to go. But if we don't turn it around, if we don't get there fucking, uh, if we don't start hitting the next gear, we might not again be fucking promoted. Okay, and now for the final month before the January transfer window, and again, it's December. It's a, it's such a big month because, of course, it has so many goddamn games. Let's take a look. A draw against Wolves, a win against Bournemouth, that's pretty good. A draw against Bristol, a draw against Fulham, a win against Forest, here we go. A loss against QPR, not good. And a win against Sheffield. That's a good month. What, we got three wins in there. Unfortunate about the loss to QPR. If we were able to turn that into another draw, going undefeated throughout all those games would have been great. Surely, we've caught up at least a little bit toward the top six. So at the start of January then, we are sitting in 10th with 10 wins, 7 draws, 8 losses. We are on 37 points, only 3 away from the top six. And there's a fair few teams that are on 40 points as well. QPR, Reading and Derby both on 40. They've got Then you've got Ipswich and Brighton also on 40 points, but just below on goal difference as well. And then you've got Middlesbrough above us as well. So I think even though we're outside the top six, it's, it's pretty apparent that we're not going to finish in the top two, whatever. But I tell you what, I'm still rating my chances of being able to crack that top six. Maybe I should be able to, I should probably make one signing at least, but then again, I really want to build up on the pre-contract players, if you know what I mean. Here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to load in one of these players. We've got Lucas Toro. We've got Nkunku. We've also got Galdino. Either one of those two. I'll try to give him a, I'll try to give him a future fee, but I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think I'm going to buy any of these players after the loan. One thing I am going to do as well whilst I'm doing that, while I'm going in for those loan players, is also start approaching a few players on pre-contracts too. We've got that centre back right there, 82 rated. His wage is only like 25, 27 grand, which is, I can't believe that. And then I'm going to go and take a look at a few other players. We've got Lewis Holtby, Strootman, Bitzel. I think I'm going to offer uh, Jaro, hand me Gyro, if that's how you say that as well. He could be one player that we pick up. Ross Barkley is a possibility. There's uh, a Pata there, a Bubakar, a bunch of players. Even Falcao, I know that he's got like, 70 odd uh, wage, but I mean, we could get him too. We got Unest, I, a couple of players I'm going to go in for. All right, so we've heard back from a few of the players that I wanted to loan in. We've got Galdino, Bayern say that we can loan him in there. We've also got Real Madrid for Lucas Toro. His wage is pretty crazy though. I'm probably not going to get him. And then we've got Nkunku, who is only 53. I think I'm going to get him because he has the lowest wage. He's also, they're all about the same overall. So I'm just going to get him in. Unes is another player there we've got as well. We've got a 78 rated left winger, 24 years of age, can definitely get higher rated than that. Vincent Abubakar, is another player I'm loving that we signed. 40 grand only for him, and he's 80 rated. We got Gyro there as well. Again, another player that can play on the left, the same with Younes there as well, but he can play in other positions as well. And then Axel Witzel, only 60 grand for a player, 82 rated, beautiful stuff. And we still have a little bit of wage left over as well. And honestly, guys, like I'm trying to sign one other player here with Zapata, but I just don't think I'm going to be able to get him for 
what uh, for the cash that I have. So that's probably going to do it for all the signings that we're going to make for the rest of this season. Okay then, so another transfer window done, and now we take a look at the results. We have got, of course, Cardiff. A 2-1 win there. We're still going in the FA Cup, as you can clearly see. We drew Man City. That's going to be interesting. Coventry City there. Uh, we won that game. We got Bolton, a draw against them. Another draw, unfortunately, against Blackburn Rovers. A win, I mean, against Blackburn, what, against Nottingham Forest. A win there for Preston, or against Preston. Man, I'm having a shocker. A draw against City, so obviously an FA Cup replay. And a loss against Brighton. Not the best way to end it. But hey, I tell you what, at least we are absolutely knocking on the door of the top six. We could definitely still get promoted. Now for February, here we go then. Win against Birmingham, that's good. Are we still in the FA Cup? Nah, I didn't think so. All right, no, no shame in not getting past Man City there. A win against Wigan, that's good. A loss against Middlesbrough, not good. And a win against Charlton, and a big win too, 4-1. And oh my God, you can taste it. You can just taste it. It's a point away now. With 12 games left to go in the season, we are just a point away. Keep it going, boys. I can start to sense something. Here we go. March, a win against Ipswich. All right, well, off to a good start. That was brave to say at the start. I'm only just realizing it now. Hopefully, we can continue on. Yes, another win here. What a get... Oh, no. Unfortunately, we lost that game against Bournemouth. Okay. A draw against Wolves. Last game. Oh, it's a win against Huddersfield. Okay. That's pretty good, though. Oh, shit. You better believe it's good. Oh, my goodness. We're right up into the top six. And we didn't just get in a sixth or fifth. We went right up to fourth. That's awesome. But, yes... We are in at the moment now. We're just going to stay there with only seven games left to go. I'm telling you what, this loaned-in player in Kunku, if it is him, he's doing bits because, my God, we've been brilliant since we got him, and he's the only change that we made into the team right now. You know, I took a look at his stats just because I'm curious, and I'm telling you what, man, in 12 games in the championship, he's got two goals and six assists. Dude is killing it. And now for the final set of games, including one game that we also have in May, it is the end of the season. Have we been able to do bits to stay in the top six? Well, we won against uh, Rotherham, lost against Norwich, won against Leeds, this is looking good so far, a win against Reading, a draw against Hull City, this is surely going to be enough, a draw against Fulham there, and of course, skipping ahead into May, as you can clearly see, we're not even looking at the last game there against Bristol, but obviously we made it to the semi-finals, we stayed in the top six. Okay then, here we go. First leg, Blackburn versus Brighton. Are we going to see Blackburn reach the uh, final? Oh, I'll tell you what, beautiful start here with a 1-0, uh, a 1-0, uh, here we go. I was about to say 1-0 win when there's still like an hour left to freaking go. But Blackburn strike first, very good start here. If Brighton pull one back, there are at least um, no away goals in the playoffs, but... They fucking do manage to pull one back. Why did I open my mouth? No idea, but either way. Still 20 minutes left to go. Is anyone going to pull one back? 10 minutes now. Anyone. Anyone. I think it's ending 1-1 and it will. Okay, well, right now no one really has the advantage. There's a second leg left to play though. And boys, come on. I just demand, I demand a solid performance today of all games. Not a fucking injury. Within the first minute, my God, that is just not a good sign at all, is it? Just tells you that we're going to get fucked on for the rest of it. Please don't be that way. An hour left to go in the game. Oh, and it's Karate again. He picks one up. Beautiful. We're back in front now. Boys, just park the bus for the next 30 minutes. That's all I fucking bet. Come on. Do not let them. Do not let them in. Come on. Keep them out. 15 minutes left to go. They are going to get one, a penalty. And then we've got an injury, a second one. You're kidding me. But we pull one back. Svensson is the one that does it. And we are going through to the final. Sounds like a few of our players lost some fucking limbs. But apart from that, it was a real battle. And we have made our way into the final. And here we go then. It's the championship playoff final. Middlesbrough beat Norwich, by the way, who were the highest seed to go through. And we obviously did the job against Brighton. So... 15 minutes in, no team has scored yet. Is anyone going to break this game uh, open at any point? We are nearly a half in and nothing has really happened except for a yellow card to Sane. Still going though, nearly at the hour mark. The substitutions are going to start piling in. Is anyone going to get the goal? It's going to be our right back in low and only 15 minutes left. Can we hang on? Boys, please, the Premier League beckons. Don't let it slip now. We've done it. Fuck's sake. We have actually fucking conceded. And now we're in extra time. 10 minutes. We get another one through a penalty. And please don't let it slip this time. No, we don't. We're through. We're in the Premier League. 2-1 win. Oh, penalty in extra time. Gazal sticks it in the back of the net. And that's it. Blackburn back in the Premier League. And here we are then. Into season three. And let's begin the first Premier League season with Blackburn. And by the way, guys, this is the team that we have. The best starting 11 that I have at the moment. But... You may be wondering, uh, there might be a few players that should be in that team that aren't. And that's because I've kind of been a bit fucking ripped off here. I've got two players that should be in the team that aren't. We've got Axel Witzel and Vincent Abubakar. Now, at the moment, Abubakar is at Leicester City, even though I apparently own him. I don't know how this works. And Axel Witzel as well is at Lazio. Now, 
I've obviously brought these guys in on pre-contract. I can't play them in the team. I don't really know what to do in this situation. Hopefully, I, I, I at the moment, I'm thinking about putting them on loan. Hopefully, someone gets the offer. I can send them away on loan and then recall them back and they'll be back in the team. I have no idea, but it's bullshit. Uh, a little bit of a development though that I should probably let you guys know of. I got an offer for uh, Gazal from Inter and he's only worth about 20 mil. I counted for double what his value is and I get 40 mil. Wow, they've accepted, which means I can probably do bits now in this first window. Yeah, why the hell not? Let's do it. Let's see if I can pick this man up. I don't know how much it's going to cost me, but we'll start off with like... I don't know, I'll lowball them. Let's go 4 mil. Still a pretty decently rated player. His value is only 12.5, so I'm probably going to offer 9 mil to start off with. Let's go for him. And here we go then. We have got the two players accepting Lewis Holtby, and we've got Hakimi. So a good right back joining us that we're just going to own straight up, not even bother loaning him in. And then, of course, Holtby, a good player to get into the midfield as well. And I think that's probably going to do it for actual signings that we're going to bring in. I'm not selling anyone and not bringing in anyone else until January when we get them on pre-contracts. Okay then, so we're underway. Only two games, and you know, there's a pretty easy game and a pretty tough game to start the Premier League, plus the EFL Cup. We have lost the game against Arsenal, lost the game against Bournemouth, which I was hoping we'd take at least a point from, and then we're still in the EFL Cup, all right, good days. Uh, it's only early days, but we are still in there with a win against Burnley. And before we take a look at the table, but only because we played so little games, I may as well advance ahead again. We have Everton, a win, that's pretty good to, uh, That's pretty good there. A loss though, unfortunately, we've taken three points out of a possible 12. A draw against Chelsea, though. I think I'll take that. How about the EFL Cup? We're still going in it. We're beating Palace. And a win against Hull City. You know what? A couple of wins in that uh, in September. We haven't taken an extraordinary amount of points, but we are sitting pretty in exactly the middle of the Premier League table, currently in 10th. Now in October, a not good start in it. We've lost against West Ham, unfortunately, at home 3-0. Then the Man City game. We've drawn. You know, we're taking at least a point out of some pretty good teams here with Chelsea, now Man City. And we lost against Southampton. So we lose against, of all those teams to lose or to get a point off, I would not have predicted bloody Man, uh, Man City. But how about the EFL Cup? We won that one. We're still going in it. This is not bad. Good to still be going in the EFL Cup. Not good to be just sitting above the relegation zone. Okay, now for November. Only three games in it, but they're against some pretty weaker opponents for Premier League standards. Let's hope that, oh, okay. All right, a loss against Aston Villa. Not good. A win against Watford. That's what we want. Can we get another win? A draw against Sunderland. So four points from a possible nine. Could have, probably would have hoped to have taken more in November. And it has us actually a little bit further ahead. 16th now, but still uh, uh, not really exactly where I'd like to be. At least we're above relegation. Really, the main goal is to survive. I'm not looking to do bits here. Not looking to finish in Europe, but... Really, the further we can get away from the relegation zone, the better. And the final month of December before January. Here we go then. A draw against West Brom. A win in the quarterfinals. We are going through to the uh, semifinals of the EFL Cup. Mate, could we go all the way? A draw against Spurs. A loss against Leicester. A draw against Stoke City. A win against Manchester United away at Old Trafford. That's massive. And a loss against Liverpool. Unfortunate. And the team that we're playing, by the way, in the semifinals of the EFL Cup, Manchester City. Do we have any hope of making it to the final? But speaking of pre-contract signings, let's get onto it. I got a ton of them. I've got Aurier, Nastasic, we got Saul. We got pretty much every single player that you can see here is available to get on pre-contract. And I might offer for every single one of them. I'm not going to be able to get every one of them, but I will definitely go through and select the ones that I want the most. And all right then, let's go. We've already got a couple of players. We've already got five players agreeing to their contract straight away. That's beautiful. That would never happen if we were still in the championship. Here we go. Aurier, a brand new, brand new, absolutely sensational right back we're getting right there. We've got a new striker in Danny Welbeck. Going to pick that man up as well. I want to get maybe hopefully another striker in maybe, uh, uh, what's his face? Goddamn uh, Balotelli. But still, we've also got Martial who could technically play at the striker position too. And then who were the other ones as well? I actually haven't seen. Camacho's another one. A little bit older, yeah, but still he's only 50 grand worth of weight and he's 84 overall. I mean, are you kidding me? And Nastasic, another quality center back. And again, it's just, it's it's insanity. We got so many great players for pretty low wage right there, especially Camacho and uh, Nastasic. And yeah, they're already in the team. See you next season. And there you go, lads. He's only gone and done it. Ricardo Rodriguez for 135 grand, man. We had to negotiate, that's for sure. But yes, we are saving a little bit. We still have a bit of cash left. He's the last player I want to pick up. And you know what? Done. All we have to do now is survive. Sorry, Mario. I don't think I can get you. Just a confirmation. Yeah, didn't think so. And so, done with January, done with the transfers, and now we take a look at the games. And to be totally honest with you, I don't know how good they went for us. We lost a big game there against Palace, 4-0. A loss against Man City, who we're actually playing the cup that uh, I'll find out the results too soon. 
We got a draw against Norwich. Obviously forced the replay. Another cup game here. We beat Manchester City in the semi. We'll see how the second leg goes. West Ham, we lost again. We're getting pumped right now in the Premier League. I have no idea what's happening. A big, another draw in the FA Cup. I wonder if we made it through. We'll find out, though. And a draw against Palace. Yeah, at least we didn't fucking get whacked 3 or 4-0. But again, we aren't scoring goals at the moment. And a loss against Man City, 1-0. So that's what? 3-3 three, three on aggregate. No, right? No, I'll, let me try again. 2-2 two, two on aggregate. Who goes through there? We did make it through the FA Cup, but if we're playing the final, it should be... And oh shit, we made it to the final of the EFL Cup. We made it to the final of the EFL Cup. Yeah, good for us, but holy crap, man. We were absolutely... Got awful in the Premier League that last month during January. And now we're sitting in 19th. And Arsenal are on 20th. How did I not clock that? Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Imagine if Arsenal actually, actually go down. That'd be ridiculous. Anyway, we have unfortunately been knocked out of the FA Cup here by Sheffield Wednesday. We've lost again to some... Oh my God, this is not looking good. A win against Watford, that's okay. And a draw against Stoke. All right, four points from nine. I'll take it. Down toward the bottom of the table. I think every point stacks up, especially now. I can't believe that we've actually made it all the way to the final, but I don't, I don't know. Are we going to win? Are we not? Ericsson's missed a penalty, so immediately a let off. Come on, boys. We have got only a few more minutes left to go, and I'm just feeling tense. I don't know if anyone's going to score a goal. You would think it'd be Spurs, especially since they're the home team. We're away swimming. I don't know. I know it's at Wembley, but there you go. Divock Origi has gone to Spurs and has scored the goal. So there you fucking go. 30 minutes left to somehow get an equalizer, maybe to try to extend this game. Suzoko, of all people coming off of the bench. 2-0 in the final. Are they going to get a third just to cap it off? Fucking go for it, mate. Nah, it's going to be a 2-0 loss in the Air Force Cup final. Very unfortunate. But hey, I'm just proud of the boys that we made it all the way. That's not bad. So then, let's take a look at all the results in March then. Obviously, we know about that uh, unfortunate loss against Spurs. We played them again, actually. We lost against Leicester again in the Premier League. How about that game? Oh, we beat them that time in the Premier League. You know what? Uh, I suppose it would have been nice to have beaten them in the EFL Cup and have won a piece of fucking silverware, but I suppose staying up is just as important. Anyway, and a point against West Brom. You know what? Four out of nine again, once again. I can. I think if I keep doing that, if I keep taking like a win, a draw, and a loss every three games, that should maybe be enough to keep me up. Although, you know, saying that, I'm still in the relegation zone. I'm two points away from Sunderland and Arsenal, and Sunderland have a game in hand. Okay then, April. We need big results here if we're going to try to move out. Let's go. We have got Swansea City a win. Good work there. Everton, tough match. And a draw. 2-2 two -two draw. Okay. Bournemouth, come on. I would have liked to have won that game, but no, it's another draw. How about Arsenal? Oh my god, absolutely fucking murdered. Pumped. 5-0. That's for a team that's also in the relegation scrap. I can't believe I'm saying that. But anyway, Hull City is a big win there because I think they're also in the relegation scrap. And a 3-1 loss against Chelsea. You know what? Of all the teams that we lost against, Arsenal and Chelsea and those, to be fair, expected. But a 5-0 loss is never any fun. And we beat, what, Swansea and Hull City and drew the other two. That could go a big way. Well, it kind of has, you know, to be fair, but I'm telling you what, we're still in the relegation battle. We're still in the relegation zone. And really, I can't see myself overlapping Sunderland or Arsenal. I think they're basically almost safe at this point, especially with a game in hand. We just have to try to finish above Hull City. So that win was massive. And now for the final set of games in the Premier League, let's take a look. We need, we need results and we need a fair few points, that is for sure. I don't think we're going to need to win every single game, but we definitely need a lot of points. Come on. A draw against Villa is not the greatest of starts. All right, then. What about the next one? A win. A one to win, that's good. But these next two games, Liverpool and Manchester United, I, I'm not sure. Anyway, we're, oh my God, we beat Liverpool. 3-2, that's a big result there. And now this one. A 2-1 win against Manchester United. That's massive. We go undefeated. We drew the first game against Aston Villa, and I was a bit worried after seeing that. But three straight wins in our last three games. What does that mean for us? Oh, 15th. Wow. I was just trying to stay out of the relegation zone. Instead, I finished way above it. It's not even in sight, the relegation zone. Beautiful. If you look at our goal difference, if we didn't win that game against Manchester United, we would have finished on 41 points. We have a lower goal difference than West Brom and Hull City, which meant... We would have finished in 18th. So we needed at least a point still from that Manchester United game, and we got the freaking win. That's huge. Only two more seasons left to go now, but this is where we hopefully get to mount a challenge. The starting 11 now is looking like this, and it's crazy how it's the exact same story from last time out when we were doing this with Nottingham Forest. Season 3, 
uh, or the first season in the Premier League was a bit of a struggle, but then the next season, it's where we just go absolutely crazy and look at these players. Welbeck's joined us. We've got Anthony Martial joining us, Ricardo Rodriguez, Nastasic. We've got Nicolas Sewell. We've got a, right, a new right back, Salah. Just so many incredible players. Like every single player that we just got, I think, on a pre-contract is right in the starting 11. All right, so I have been able to do a little bit of revenue raising. I sold a couple of the players that... Uh, uh, pretty decent, but we're pretty much right on the bench. So hopefully I've brought in a fair bit of cash. For example, one player, Gyro, who's going to be going for about 25 mil. So that's brought the budget up to about 30 million. I reckon I could sign another real quality center midfielder now. And I'm actually going to put an offer down for every single one of the both CDMs and center midfielders that I have in my shortlist. So after a fair bit of negotiation, I've been able to get two players to agree to contracts. We've got Kevin Campbell and we've also got Sergi Data. Uh, I'm not going to get any one of these two for below their value, but it's still pretty good deals. I reckon we've got Sergi Data, 38 mil when he's worth 38 mil, only 70 grand. And then you've got Campbell, a little over his value and uh, about 100 grand or so. You know, to be totally honest with you, I do want to get this man because he's higher rated, he's younger, and I think we're sort of getting a better deal if you take a look at it, you know, logistically. So let's get him. There you go. He's going to slot right into that starting 11, replacing Pacino, who's going to go down to the bench. But uh, yeah, I reckon that means that we should surely be able to push. That team is capable of winning the Premier League, I think. Maybe if we had a slightly high-rated goalkeeper or another high-rated striker, it could help us out. But I think I'm pretty good for just that. And I know it's early days, but we are pretty much toward the top end of the table, which is where you want to be. We are currently in fifth. Now, in September, we got three Premier League games and, of course, an EFL Cup game against, of all teams, Chelsea. A draw here against Spurs. We're playing a lot of very good teams early on. Sunderland, another draw there. How about in the EFL Cup? Apparently, we are either got knocked out or whatever on extra time and penalties, but uh, a win against Burnley. There we go. Still currently sitting in fifth position. We must love that spot, but either way, I will say as well that we were knocked out by Chelsea because I looked ahead and there are no other EFL Cup games. Now it's October. Again, we're only playing like three or four Premier League games in a month at the moment. Chelsea, a loss there. Man, we've been trying against them a fair bit, but still. A loss against Stoke, that's not good. And a win against Leicester. Thank God, we actually rescue it and we get some sort of points in October. Now for November, let's take a look. Hopefully we get the results going, but recently they have been sensational. A draw against Newcastle, a draw against Watford. Man, we need to start getting the win soon. Not that. We lost against West Ham and a loss against Arsenal. So we don't win a single game in November. When was our last win against, obviously, Leicester in October? Man, we need to start getting three points more often. I was hoping at least Champions League this season. We are currently eighth after 13 games. And finally, the month of December before January, and we get back into signing a couple more plays on pre-contract. And please... Let's get some points here, please. A loss, no. Fuck no. A loss against Swansea. A loss against Southampton. We started so well, how have we gone to shit here? I can't believe it. A loss against Manchester United. This is disastrous. A win against Norwich and a loss against Crystal Palace. Our team is fucking... Uh, it almost perfor it's almost performing worse now at this stage in December and in fucking November and all that than what they were last season. Before we even look at our league position, okay, look at that team. Look at that fucking team. And now let's take a look at the table. We are 16th. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? That starting 11 is way better than most other Premier League teams. And the bench is pretty well stacked with a couple of pretty decent players as well. Maybe a weak goalkeeper and a weak striker. That, that would probably be about it though. Really, there's no excuse. I almost want to buy another player, and I'd probably prefer to get a goalkeeper. The only problem is, I don't really have that much cash. Really, almost to sign a couple of plays on pre-contract. All I have is just under a quarter of a mil. Look, the way I see it, the way that we've been playing in the last month or two, we have been fucking abysmal. So there's no way that we could surely be any worse with a team of that caliber. I'm sure we're going to stay up, and maybe we'll have to try again next season, because we may as well pack the fucking season in now. Now I think I'm just going to go with the cash I have, for a few plays, and I'm definitely getting a quality goalkeeper. First signing I'm going to make will be Angel Correa, a quality striker, 24 years of age, should hopefully get even better when he joins us, and that only leaves us with just over 100 grand. So that means I'm really going to only be able to make one more signing, and it's definitely going to be a certain keeper. And that goalkeeper is going to be Perrin. So 87 rated, 27 years of age. I think he might hopefully be 88 when he joins us, potentially. I don't know. He could get higher than that, but only 100 grand. Way cheaper than the only other keeper that I had in my shortlist in David De Gea, who's 
wage is like 300 something and I wouldn't be able to afford him at all. So we're going to get Mattia Perrin instead. He's still a quality keeper. I'm also going to try to offload one or two of uh, my other players in the hope that maybe there's a chance we could sell them and get a little bit extra cash in and maybe sign one or two more players on pre-contracts. So I have sold one of my players for quite a fair bit. Not a player I really wanted to sell, but he was going to be gone regardless, Sidney Persino. So we're going to sell him for 25 mil, brings in nearly 20 mil of cash, plus the wage that he was getting paid is now free. So we've just gotten a hell of a lot of cash now. That means I'm going in now for as many plays as I can. And you know, I'm going to be able to get a fair few of them. That's for sure. So, all right, then we got a whole bunch of players accepting free contracts now. Alexis Sanchez, he's yes, 31 years of age, but you know, I don't even care. It's only one more season left. Let's get him in, 88 rated, that's for sure. This man's a little bit younger, 25, uh, 25 years of age for our Merit Lapore. We'll get him in as well. And again, we're really cutting down on the wage at the moment, but we should still hopefully be able to get a few others. We've got Roe Magnoli, another quality center back. We will get him as well. And two more left to go. Another center midfielder, I think. And actually two center midfielders. We've got Gundogan, definitely getting that man as well. And will we have enough cash for the final player in Campbell? One of the other players I was trying to buy straight up. Yes, we will. Beautiful. So that's everybody. And with those players signed and joining us next season, I think I'm now done. This is the month of January in 2020. Have we been able to bounce back in the Premier League? Well, we start off with a win against Everton, which is good. And then we go right back with a fucking loss against Palace. There are certain teams that I've really not done well against. Palace being one, Swansea being one. Have we uh, been knocked out of the uh, FA Cup? No, we haven't. We won against QPR. And then we drew against Norwich. And then we lost against West Ham. West Ham are another team that I just seem to fucking lose against all the time as well. It's a fucking embarrassment that we are four points off safety with 20, what, 22 games in with that team. It is an absolute fucking embarrassment. But I refuse to believe that we are going to have that shit of a season that we could actually be relegated with a team that is that good. Now for the month of February, let's go. We've of course been able to get through in the FA Cup since we were going to play another game against Aston Villa later on. But a 2-1 win against Burton, you would have hoped to God that we had won that game anyway. Burnley, another win, 2-1 there. Uh, another draw, here we go against Sunderland. And knocked out of the FA Cup in the round of 16 by Aston Villa. I mean, our season's bad, but I didn't think it'd be that bad. And another loss, Watford. We are probably just hanging on, aren't we? <sighs> there are some teams that aren't doing all too well, like Spurs being in 11th. I think they'd hope to have been a lot better, but fucking we have got to be doing better than 14th. If you'd told me that we would be finishing in the fucking bottom 10, let alone anywhere outside of Champions League positions or just European positions, I'd be fucking laughing. I, I, would, not, I would not have believed you, but anyway. Now, after recent results, I'm not so surprised. Draw against Everton. A win against Swansea, that's okay. A win against Arsenal, hey... A win against Manchester United. All right, then. This is this is better. Here we go. Still doesn't take us very, very far up the table, though. Let's be honest. We're only in 12th. But then again, we're very close to Man City and Liverpool. Once again, a lot of big teams that are not having good seasons. Can we keep that win streak going, though? Nope. All right. Nope. All right. Cool. No. We just put that to bed straight away. Very good stuff. A 4-2 loss. Not good. A win, though, against Stoke City. A draw against Chelsea. And a draw against Manchester City. Okay. Well, we're not going to get relegated. We're not going to do anything amazing. I doubt that we're going to finish in a European position now. I think that's pretty much out of the equation. We're basically finishing smack bang in the middle of the table. Yeah, still in 12th. And look, to be honest, I mean, ninth place, Stoke City are six points away from us. I can't see us finishing really anywhere too higher up or even lower down the table. And let's finish off the season, a fucking very disappointing season. But hopefully we can maybe wrestle back a bit of pride here. We got a win against Newcastle, a draw against Leicester, a loss against Spurs, not good. A loss against Liverpool, please no. A, a goalless draw to end off the season, what a fucking disaster. The whole season's been an absolute shambles, but whatever. We put it behind us. We have one more season left to try to do something. We're going to have amazing new players joining us. The depth of the squad, even though we've got a great starting 11, is going to be improved just in general. And surely we're going to do better than this. We finish in 13th. I don't fucking know how. I don't know what you would put it down to, whether it be a lack of squad depth, uh, even though while we do have a very good starting 11 and a decent bench, not a lot of very good reserve players. And I don't know if the, the goalkeeper being below 80 has anything to do with it, but I couldn't Put my, I could not put it down to any one thing. I'm not sure what it is. Fucking, that season was mental though. You got Palace winning the thing. You got Southampton finishing second. Let's see who's getting relegated. Norwich, Watford, and West Brom. Not too surprising there. But Man City finishing in 12th along with us in 13th. That's fucking bizarre. I don't even know what was going on there. And now for the fifth and final season with Blackburn Rovers. The last season in the Premier League was an oh, absolute god-awful disaster. But surely there is no way that we're going to repeat that calamitous of a season. Hopefully, 
we can repeat what Blackburn did in the very first Premier League season and win the whole damn thing. This is now the starting 11, and you're going to notice a lot of changes. For example, every single player in every single position in that starting 11 is at least 85 rated or higher. We got a bitch and new goalkeeper, 88 rated in Perrin, a new strike force in Sanchez and Correa. They're absolutely sensational with these South Americans right there. And then, of course, other changes like Gundogan going in, Laporte, and just shitloads of other players, man. Seriously. I'm probably not even going to bother looking for any other players because we still don't have that great a budget and I really couldn't buy anyone in that could kick anyone out of the current starting 11 that we have. I think honestly all I'm going to do is just go month by month by month as I have been doing before and just checking out the results and hopefully this time we might be able to do something. So let's go then starting off a brand new Premier League season with a game against Arsenal and a win which is good that's exactly how we wanted to start it off. And that's not how we wanted to keep it going. With a loss against Brighton, please don't tell me that it's going to be one of those seasons again. Anyway, Derby in the EFL Cup, we won that game. That's very good. And Swansea, a win there as well. Okay, so like I said, not really doing any transfer stuff. That's the first uh, first month of August done. And so after the first three games to start the season, we're in a pretty similar position to where we were last time out. Now into September then. Let's go. Some uh, maybe potentially easy games, some tough games. We will see. A win against Bournemouth. That's what we wanted. There we go. A loss against Chelsea. Tougher game. I guess I can sort of forgive the team for losing that one. Watford a win. 2-1. Very good. And Stoke a draw. I'd like to be a little bit more consistent, a bit more dominant. Six games in and we're just outside the top five. Now the month of October then, and we have a game by the way against Liverpool in the uh, EFL Cup later on. I might potentially know the results of that, but still moving on. A draw against Palace. They were a bit of a bogey team for us. Fuck, they won. They're the reigning champions. Let's remember that. A win against Everton, a win against Burnley, who we had a pretty good track record, and I... Oh my god, we actually won that game. I thought that we lost because uh, <laughs> there was no game scheduled for the month of November in the EFL Cup. No, but we won that game. We're still in it. I thought we were knocked out for sure. But anyway, we are now just uh, three points off top spot Stoke City. And we have a game in hand as well. So if we win it, depending on goal difference, we could go top. Now for November, four games, some pretty tough ones in there. Let's see how we go. A loss against Man City. And you know what? If they if we'd won that game, we would have gone top. And instead, they've gone top. So either way, Aston Villa now. A win against them. Good stuff. Newcastle, a win against them. And then Sunderland, a draw. We went against both Northeast teams, but we were able to get four points out of six from them. And I hope that means we're still in the top four. We are, and we're just three points off top spot. Man City are a point above us. And you know what? We're doing way better than what we were last season, that is for sure. I think at this point, we would have been in the bottom half, and we were just shocking. But now, we're actually playing a bit more capably. Now, for the final month of December, starting off with a game against Fleetwood Town very late on. I think this is the quarterfinals of the EFL Cup. And we've been knocked out of them. Oh my, we've been knocked out of the EFL Cup by Fleetwood freaking town. What a run that they're going on. Holy shit. Anyway, uh, a loss against Liverpool. Don't tell me this is where our fucking season begins to fucking collapse. It's not looking good so far. We're without a win. Still without a win in December. Don't fucking tell me. Don't fucking tell me. Oh my god, we save it toward the end. But still, shithouse. And we're almost definitely at the top four now. Yep, we've now fallen to sixth. We were within a win of going top and now we're out of the top four completely. You know what? That's fucking terrific, isn't it? Seriously. I guess I guess it's just not meant to be. We can have a fucking superstar team like the one that we have now and still not even fucking be in the top four. How is that team not at least even... If, if the fucking season ended now, this that team would not even be in Champions League. Are you kidding me? We have made it to January now. We have made it to a new transfer window. But again, if this being the last season, I'm not really focused. And again, even still don't really have the cash to make too big a difference. So let's just keep it going then. West Ham with a draw there. Another draw against Everton. And obviously we've been able to get through in the FA Cup since we had to play against Man City. But what about these last two Premier League games? A loss and a win against Bournemouth. How the fuck is this team just not dominating? Like, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm being a little unrealistic, but surely this team has to be fucking killing it. Uh, anyway, are we still in the FA Cup? Yes, we are. All right then. Well, you know what? If we can win the FA Cup, because we almost are definitely not winning the Premier League, I guess that can be a bit of a saving grace. Blackburn Rovers are currently in seventh position in the Premier League. Like, are we even going to... Our highest finish in this career mode is not even going to be in the top five. This is just... Oh. Now into February. Are we going to eventually get it back on track? Well, we do start off with a win against Newcastle. That's good. And a draw against Villa. A win against Southampton. We're still going in that FA Cup, you know. That could still happen for us. Anyway, and a win against Swansea. All right. So that's an undefeated month of February. That's that's okay. It's still not beyond us. Top four is definitely possible. But the Premier League title, is that still a possibility? Well, wins against teams like Liverpool are definitely going to help. Let's keep it going. 
Draws against Sunderland. That's not great. How about that FA Cup? Still going in it. We're actually in the semi-finals. That's massive. We are in Wembley. That's great. And a win against Leicester. And what about Manchester United? A draw against them. Again, undefeated. So even though we haven't lost for two months now, we are unfortunately further away from Arsenal than what we were last month. Unfortunately, they're actually nine points away from us now. And they have a game in hand. So something tells me they're not looking to slip up anytime soon. And we needed to take maximum points. We clearly haven't done. We could still maybe finish second. I don't see us finishing top though. But now for April. Let's see. We got one big fixture there in the FA Cup. Although I'm still keen to see how we go in the Premier League. A win against Brighton. Good. Arsenal. That would have been a massive win had we got it. We would have slowed them down. But no. A draw there. So what can you do? That's pretty much that I would imagine. A draw against Southampton. How about this FA Cup game? A win against Spurs at Wembley in the semis. We are through to the final of the FA Cup. We're definitely going to see how that goes. Even though we're probably not going to win the Premier League, we could win an FA Cup. And a draw against Man City. Yeah, you can all but rule out us winning the Premier League now. We are sick, actually, on 54 points. Too many draws, mate. That's the problem. We haven't lost that many games, but, I mean, we just aren't winning enough. That's it. That is our problem. Everton now above us. Stoke City above us in... I just don't know, man. I don't know with only five games left to play. We might still be able to finish in the top four, even though we aren't going any further than this. It would be cool to see us at least finish in the Champions League position, but still. Let's go. A win here against Burnley. A, a big win here against uh, West Ham. Can we continue that on? That's for sure. A win against Stoke. A draw against Spurs. And a win against Chelsea. I'll tell you what, that is what. Uh, I, I'm very bad with math. That's like 14 out of 15 points on the final in the final month. Maybe we have just finished in the top four, surely. We have indeed. There was no way after doing that well in the final month we weren't finishing. We go third. That is our best finish with Blackburn after five whole uh, seasons with them. We went from nearly being relegated in the championship to being able to finish third in the Premier League. We couldn't win it, but that's that is unfortunate. We're at least going to get a go at this, though. We have Leicester City versus Blackburn Rovers in the FA Cup final. Who was going to come out victorious in that one? This would be an absolutely perfect, perfect way to end this whole career mode. Let's see if we can do it. Come on, Blackburn. You can do this. You've got the better team, surely, on paper. You can do this. I know that this Leicester City team can be special at times. A red card straight away is big, too. They lost, I'm assuming, one of their strikers there. A yellow card. A goal to Correa. He breaks it open there. 34th minute. And Blackburn have the lead. And now only about a half hour left to go in the game. Is anyone able to get a second? I'm sure... Everything is coming through right now. Surely no subs. Nothing's being made. 10 minutes left to go. Is that going to do it? Will it be just a 1-0 victory for Blackburn Rovers? There you go. No substitutions. No nothing. It was just a red card, a yellow, and then the goal to Correa. But that is all it will take. An FA Cup victory for Blackburn Rovers. And that is how we finish the season. That's how we finish the whole damn career, mind you. Anyway, let's go back over it. Let's see. In five seasons, we were able to win one domestic cup. Of course, that FA Cup that we just won only today. And then the biggest win was a 4-0 win against uh, Bremen there. A biggest defeat, 5-0 to Arsenal. No good. Record transfer fee of 38 mil. I assume that was for Sergi Dada. Ended up making about 8 mil. That's not bad. But 261 games played. Exactly 100 wins, 77 draws, 84 losses. I think we did a little bit better with Nottingham Forest. I think overall, not just in terms of total wins and stuff, but what we were able to, what we were able to achieve. We definitely did better with Nottingham Forest. Although... Uh, it, you know, it, it, I would like to at least win something with every single club. And being able to get that FA Cup, I don't want to consider this a total disaster. But we've done all right. Still, though, that is another return to glory career mode done. This time, Blackburn Rovers is ticked off the list. Let me know in the comments down below any other teams you would like to see me do a return to glory with. There are plenty of other great teams to do. And I've heard a lot of suggestions. I'm pretty keen on one or two. But just let me know in the comments down below and we will get on it. Thanks, guys, for watching. Until next time, my name is Master Bucks. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have a good one.